بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back viewers We were discussing before the break some principles and guidelines that needed to be observed so as once attires would be uh, legally okay we said that to use uh, uh, to see uh, the most important thing is that the clothes covers one's private part because it a mandate it's a mandate that one covers the private part we also said that the attire should not be the cloth should not be a cloth that is peculiar to the disbelievers as uh, because if it's peculiar to the disbelievers then it becomes haram for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says whosoever look like a set of people then he is amongst them and in a lot of situations in a lot of occasions the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will prohibit an act just because such act is amongst the habit the norm of the disbelievers so therefore if such kind of cloth is something that is peculiar to the disbelievers it becomes unlawful for one to put such a cloth we also said that the clothing should not look like the clothing of the women and neither should that of the women Uh, that uh, that of the woman should also not look like that of the men meaning one should not look, uh, wear a cloth that looks like the cloth of the opposite sex for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam la'ana cost place his cost on mushabbihina min ar-rijal bin nisa wal mushabbihati min an-nisa bin rijal the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam place his cost on men that look like women and women that look like men in their dressing maybe in their statements and what have you so it becomes legally wrong for one to dress like women to wear a footwear that is being wear worn by women to talk like women and just like it is legally wrong for women to talk like men or dress like men or wear footwears that are worn by men also We also said that it should not be a cloth of show off meaning the intention matters one should not put off on a cloth of show off scholars said that the cloth could be of show off looking at it from two dimensions one some people will try to impress people by putting on most expensive clothes clothing or the best clothing or the most beautiful clothing so as they will be pointed at such is wrong also some people could put on rags or clothes that are worn out so as to show people piety and that they care less about the world that is also wrong that is also wrong also it could be under the category of show off that one wears an attire that is contrary to the culture of the people whom he live with because if you dress in such a way and manner that is contrary to that of the people of your locality you become something either a life stock or someone that people point at and that is also wrong it's also considered as libas shohra the clothes of show off also the clothes should not be showy revealing in such a way that it reveals one's aura subhanallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we should cover the aura so it's going to be wrong for one to dress in such a manner way and manner that it's as do he has not even put on any attire so the essence of dressing is to cover one but today we will find out that people now find joy and pleasure in exposing a part of their body people think it's part of civilization 
But then, in school, we were told that when people were not civilized, they were walking around naked. And that dressing now and covering the nakedness is part of civilization. That as civilization came, they started wearing clothes. Now, why are people now going back to that under-civilized society? That uncivilized society? Why are people now taking joy in nakedness and things of that nature? You observe that that means there's a problem somewhere. So, the clothes should not be showy. The clothes should also not be tight in such a way that it tells or it describes the shape of one. It shows everything, it exposes everything as if one is not even putting on anything. That is also wrong because one is expected to cover the aura. So, these are some of the principles that when observed, that will mean that one have one an Islamically recognized attire. It is very important to note this point that a cloth could be unlawful, maybe because of the fabric, maybe because of the intention, maybe because of the manner in which it is worn, maybe because of the manner in which it is sewn and things of that nature. We said maybe because of the fabric. Yes, that's most especially for the male. It's going to be, it's wrong for a male to put on silk. You observe that that cloth is haram because of the fabric, uh, fabric, because of the silk in it. But then as for the women, then there's no problem with that regards. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once held the silk in his right hand and then the gold in the left. He now said, Inna hadaini. These two things, Hurrima ala dhukuri ummati, is haram on the meal of my ummah. In one hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man labis al harira fi dunya, whosoever puts on the silk in the world, he wouldn't be allowed. He wouldn't be given the chance. He wouldn't put it on on the day of resurrection. Now you observe that this clothing is made haram for the male because of the fabric. We also said the intention. As for the intention, we have stated earlier on that if one intends show off, then that renders the clothing, the attire as haram. But if one now wears the clothing with the intention of showing the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah have so bestowed on him, then that will mean it's going to one will have reward. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see the stresses of his blessing on one on his servant. We also said it could be because of the manner in which it is worn. Originally, there's no problem, but in the manner now, maybe because the clothing now comes beneath the ankle. As for the male, it becomes haram. You observe the manner now because it's now beneath the level, the boundary. Maybe because of the way it is being sewn. It is sewn in the nature, in a manner in which the clothing of the women is being sewn. And then one now wears it, then that will render that clothing as haram. We also said that maybe because the cloth is peculiar to a set of people maybe it is peculiar to the disbelievers or to the women it becomes haram also it is very important to note the fact that it's going to be wrong for one to wear a cloth that carries symbol a symbol among the symbol of the disbelievers maybe it carries on it a cross or something of that nature then it becomes haram for one to wear such an attire because of the symbol that it carries in it. These are some of the things that one needs to observe. And that tells us how Islam deals with everything from the clothing to the way you eat to the way you even ease yourself. 
All such things are discussed in detail in Islam. That tells us how perfect our religion is. Brothers and sisters and faith, inshallah, in the next episode, we are going to try to discuss the manners of the attires, that is, from the male perspective. And then, inshallah, if time permits, we are going to discuss the women way of dressing, the female way of dressing in Islam. All these things we are going to discuss so as we dress Islamically. Until we meet next time, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.